Now this equation looks a lot more complicated than the last one that we had. This is still under the section of equations that are quadratic in nature or quadratic in form. Even though it looks like it is rational, it is. But we'll do a lot better if we can see that this guy is quadratic. And here's how you can see that it's quadratic. This guy's your constant. If I look at this as some variable expression, I have to have his square at the beginning. And you see that I do have his square at the beginning right here. So what I can do is what's called a u substitution. And instead of writing things that are complicated like this, I make this declaration. I let u represent this complicated guy, 1 over x minus 3. And when I do that, I'm going to be able to rewrite my equation in a way that's a little bit easier for me to work with. So I'm going to write what I see here. I'm going to, my 2 is still 2, but instead of writing all of this, I'm replacing that with u. So it's 2 u squared. And this guy becomes 9u plus 9 is equal to 0. And what we can see here is that we have something that's a lot easier to work with. I can look at this horrible guy or do this. When I see this, I feel much more at home. This is something that's nice, it's quadratic, and the first quadratic method that comes to mind is to factor. Does this guy factor? Well, let's try it. There's no common factor other than 1. 2u squared has to break down as 2u times u. And notice that everything here is positive. Now when I break down the 9, I've got 1 and 9, or 3 and 3. But very quickly you realize that the combination has to be 3 and 3. Now, this is a nice equation for me to finish solving, so what does u equal? When I solve this for u, u equals negative 3 halves, or this guy gives me u equals negative 3. Now it's very important to notice what's going on here. I changed from x's into u's because it was easier to see and easier to work with. And I get my answers right here. But understand this is in terms of u, not x. You do not plug these numbers into anything. Instead, you, you leave this world right here. We're no longer going to be where it's green. Okay. We're going to leave this universe, so to speak, and we're going to go to a place where we were supposed to be, which is with 1 over x minus 3. So I make the substitution going back. u equals 1 over x minus 3. So instead of u, I'm going to write 1 over x minus 3 is equal to negative 3 halves. And in this guy, I now have an equation that I can solve. This is, a <coughs> this is a rational equation. It's a proportion. So it tells me the cross products are equal, which means the cross product this way of negative 3 times x minus 3 is equal to the other cross product here, which is 1 times 2. Now, I do have a negative out front. So it may be better for you to think about this guy as negative 3 over 2. This negative does not apply to the 3 and the 2. It's not negative 3 over negative 2. If it were negative over negative, it would just be a positive, and that's not what I have. So we went from something that was rational to something that was looks to be linear. So let's solve this. I get negative 3x plus 9 is equal to 2 move that 9 over so I get negative 7 and when I finish this guy I have positive 7 thirds. Now we were talking about this earlier with our rational equations. You have to pay attention to what your restricted values are. In my original problem my denominator was x minus 3. So the value that would make this denominator equal 0 is positive 3. I don't have that for my answer so I should be okay here. I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side here. U will be replaced with its equivalent, which is 1 over x minus 3 is equal to negative 3. 
If it helps you out, put that over one. So again, we have a proportion and the cross products are equal. So negative three times x minus three equals one times one. Negative three x plus nine equals one. And then you just kind of finish this guy off. Negative three x equals negative eight. So x equals positive eight thirds. And again, since this guy does not match up with your restricted value, he should be okay. All the steps we've done here are correct. So we're good. Now, what we should be able to do here is to check our work with the graphing calculator. So when we do that, let's come back up here. I can get this to fit. All right. Let's go to your solver feature. So we go to math. Solvers at the bottom, so you can just press up and get to it. So let's type in the equation. And when we type in this equation, you have to be very, very careful about your parentheses. I'm doing two, and I'm opening up parentheses for my big square. So it's one divided by x minus three. So it's one divided by the quantity x minus three. C close parentheses for the denominator. Close parentheses for this whole expression right here that's about to be squared plus nine times the group, one divided by, so my division, I've got x minus three, so I have to open up parentheses, x minus three, close up the denominator, close up the whole fraction, plus nine. So I don't really think that's right. Let's check, like we always do, let's check from negative 10. What do we get? I get 2.3 repeating, so that's the same as 2 and a third, which matches up to the solution that we found before, which is 7 thirds right here. So that's good. We know how we do negative 10, we do positive 10. Let's do positive 10, see if we can find one on the other side. So solve it. It's taken a while. All right, this is kind of, well, there we go. There's an error. It says there's no sign change. Now, this is not saying that we don't have another solution, but the algorithms that it uses to find solutions, it's not helping it here. And there's an issue with that. And if you think about what's going on, look at the original problem. We said that we had an issue here when x is equal to positive 3. Well, I'm picking something that's on the right side of 10. Now, look at my answer. x is equal to 8 thirds. 8 thirds is on the left side of 3, and I'm trying to pick something that's on the right side of 3. But since I have a restricted value there, that's where my issues come from. It's a thing called a vertical asymptote that we're going to see later on when we start graphing these guys. But 3 is not a valid input value, so we have issues trying to come from that area. However, If I were to type in something like 2.9, see that's on the left side of where we start having trouble. Then I do get my other solution, which is 2 and 2 thirds. And that matches up with the 8 thirds that I had before. So we have to be very careful. It's not that there's something wrong with the calculator, but there are certain limitations and there are certain hiccups we have, in particular in this problem when x equals positive 3. So there's a, we just have to know how to work around that and we can still come up with these two solutions.